Good afternoon and welcome back from spring break. I'm Melanie Linder, Vice President for Marketing and Communications. First, I'd like to thank you for joining us this afternoon for our first COVID-19 open forum for UND students. Over the last few weeks, you've been receiving a lot of email announcements from the university, but today we want to personally respond to those questions that we've been receiving. This open forum is yet another way for us to connect with you. And if you haven't already, I want to personally encourage you to sign up for our coronavirus blog. This is where we are posting our latest updates and responses to frequently asked questions, including those questions that we're getting today. This forum is being recorded, so if you have friends, parents that are unable to watch this live, they will be able to watch it. Um, later, we'll be posting that to our blog. I'm joined today by our interim president, Joshua Wynn, our incoming president, Andy Armacost, provost, Tom DiLorenzo, Vice President for Finance and Operations, Jed Shivers. Vice President for Student Affairs, Diversity and Inclusion, Kara Hallgren. Interim Vice President for Research and Economic Development, John Mihalik. Senior Vice Provost, Debbie Storrs. Our Athletic Director, Bill Chase. UND Police Chief, Eric Plummer. And UND Alumni Association and Foundation CEO, Deanna carlson Zink. Provost DiLorenzo is our COVID-19 point person, and he will serve as the moderator for our discussion today. But before we get started, President Wynn and incoming President Armacost would like to say a few words to you. President Wynn. Uh, thank you very much, Melanie. Good afternoon, everyone. These certainly are extraordinary and challenging times, and we thank all of the students for your commitment to UND, but make uh, no mistake about it, our strong commitment is to you. Uh, that commitment is on two levels. One, to try to ensure your safety in this time and the safety of the UND and surrounding community. And two, to help you complete your educational goals. These are difficult times because of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. One of the principal ways of trying to deal with this is what we call social distancing. And that means to keep physically apart. But I think in these times, it's important to remember that we're really talking about physical distancing and not social isolation. It's really important that we stay together. And that's why we're having this Zoom conference and it's also why we are working in the online format now. Now, I know that that is a change for some of you, but probably for most, you've had some activity online even before this as part of your educational experience. We have been working with both the external environment as well as internally to make sure we can make all of this work. We've been coordinating with the North Dakota University system as well as the North Dakota Department of Health and the governor's office to make sure UND's response is in accordance with what else is going on in the state. And in fact, your UND has helped lead the way in higher education to carry out safe but effective, not in-person education. And that's what, what we intend to do for the remainder of this semester. As you know, those of you who are seniors, we unfortunately will not have a, a graduation ceremony this uh, spring, but you will be um, acknowledged for your achievements, and we hope to welcome you in person at a subsequent commencement ceremony in the future. But for the present, we need to continue to work online and we need to continue to have the students who are not on campus remain at your home location, both for your safety and the safety of the community. But in this challenging time, we're going to work with you to make sure your educational experience is the outstanding one that you expect from UND. We welcome your questions. We hope to answer most of them uh, today but for those that we can't answer today because of the one hour format, make sure you check online and submit further questions. We will get back to you at the earliest possible opportunity to make sure 
we are responsive to your needs and to your questions. Over the last several weeks, and even before that, incoming President Andy Amrakast and I have been working together as a duo, as a team. Me as interim uh, president and Andy as the incoming president, and we have coordinated uh, our activities, but it also has enabled us to maximize the efficiency of the office of the president with me focusing on some activities and Andy focusing on others. So you're getting two for one, at least over these couple of months. And for those of you who haven't yet had a chance uh, and the pleasure to meet Andy, I'd like to introduce him now and invite him to say some comments. Incoming President Darmacost. President Wynn, thank you. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here to join my colleagues um, to share information with, with you, the student body of the University of North Dakota. It's, uh, it's important that, uh, that we're here today um, to keep you up to speed on the decisions that we're making, but just as importantly to hear all the thoughts that you have in terms of the questions and the concerns uh, that have risen up in the wake of the COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic. So as President Wynn pointed out, it's, it's nice that um, I've been included in all the, the planning discussions because uh, when I take over on the 1st of June, all the discussions that we're having now certainly play into that time frame. And so, um, so the transition from president to president will happen smoothly and with, without any interruption. Um, I pledge my support to each of you. Um, I know that you're gonna listen carefully to the questions and answers that are posed today. And our goal again is to make sure that um, you have the information uh, that you need um, as you go forward. We're committed as a team to taking great care of you and also to making sure that you still get a top-notch education. Um, so I'll turn it over now to um, our COVID response lead for the campus, Provost Tom DiLorenzo, who um, is going to um, run the session today and make sure that he facilitates all the questions and answers for you. Tom, over to you. Thank you, President Armacost. Appreciate it. I want to welcome everyone to this Zoom town hall meeting today. We're delighted to uh, be able to present to you in this way. The purpose of the forum is to answer questions our community may have and to have you speak directly with university leadership. We had one session earlier today with faculty and staff, so we're getting used to this new format, this new Zoom way of interacting. Uh, to ask questions, use the Q&A section on the Zoom web webinar at the very bottom. It shows up as a button, like the chat button, and it functions in a similar manner. When you type your questions in the text box, they are then visible to us. And I will address the question to the panelist who is closest to the information. Before I begin, I'd like to say that I'm truly inspired with the ways that the faculty and the staff have rapidly, competently, and effectively risen to the challenge to continue to enhance student success and to ensure that seniors will graduate. I'm impressed with the compassion that the entire UND community is expressing to our students, our community, and each other. The faculty and staff have embraced new methods of work and communication in our remote working environment. We have met, heard many positive comments from you, uh, especially noting our commitment to you, which is true, and from parents who have thanked us for our continued communication. We have not solved every problem yet, but we are addressing questions, concerns, and needs in a priority-focused environment, and we are confident that we will get through this together. We're going to be opening up the forum for questions. So again, to submit a question, go to the Q&A bar at the, very at the very bottom, and we'll be able to pick it up. We're going to start with a few questions that we've heard from you over the last couple of days. Uh, Senior Vice Provost Debbie Storrs, I'm going to get you started with the first question. Students who stay enrolled and active in their courses throughout the rest of the semester, uh, or uh, um, what will there be in terms of changes for financial aid? Great. Thank you. Well, welcome back, students, from your spring break. I want to thank you for being leaders in action as we navigate this uh, remote landscape together. So in terms of financial aid, if you stay actively enrolled and active in your classes, you should have no changes whatsoever to your scholarships or your financial aid. Some of you may need to make some adjustments to your course schedule 
and I encourage you to work with your academic advisor or to reach out to One Stop. They are here ready to respond to you and help you navigate and make informed decisions. We wanna make sure that you don't make any decisions that might impact your federal financial aid because we are obligated to follow certain regulations. Uh, so we just wanna make sure students stay engaged with their, their advisors before you make any decisions. Thank you, Debbie. The next question is for Vice President Jed Shivers. I'm gonna put two questions together for you. Do we get reimbursed for dorm housing and meal plans since we are now off campus? And a corollary of that is student fees. Yeah, so this is a really good question. And I wanna start out by saying, uh, I think we get the concept. In other words, uh, you know, people are not, uh, a lot of people are gonna be leaving campus uh, and, you know, broadly speaking, and there are probably other student fee areas, but broadly speaking, we've really got three main places. We've got housing, dining, and uh, maybe to some extent parking. So uh, I think we get it. We understand why people have a, a reasonable desire to see, uh, you know, some sort of uh, refund or credit. Uh, and I do want to also give uh, my colleague, Dr. Halgren, a chance to talk about this as well. Uh, but uh, let me tell you exactly where we are. So as you may know, uh, the University of North Dakota is part of the North Dakota University system. And that in turn is governed by the State Board of Higher Education. Uh, as of today, uh, we had a meeting of the vice presidents of all of the 11 institutions. I think they were all there plus the Vice Chancellor for Finance, and we had a conversation expressly about this issue because everyone is facing uh, the same very reasonable question. And uh, we have provided uh, information about this, what we think the costs are gonna be, et cetera, to the system that they are in turn compiling it for the State Board of Higher Education board members. So at this point, uh, I cannot say that uh, we will be able to do this because I don't have the authority to make that decision. But I do think this matter is gonna be resolved reasonably quickly. That's the impression I'm getting. I, that, I could be mistaken about that, but as of today, that seemed to be the uh, tone and tenor of the conversation. So I would just ask you to stay tuned. Like I said, we get it. Uh, and uh, we're working towards uh, you know, creating a reasonable solution uh, that we hope will work well for students. Thank you, Jed. I'll take the next question. Is there consideration of moving to a pass-fail option for final grades? At this university, we don't call it pass-fail, but we call it satisfactory, unsatisfactory. It's the same concept. And yes, we're working on a plan right now. Uh, we've been in contact with the Senate Executive Committee and with Gracie Leon, who is the student uh, body president. And our, we anticipate asking a couple of groups, including the Student Senate tomorrow evening, to work with us on a potential pr proposal. And as we move forward, uh, we're very hopeful that we'll let you know more about that in the very near future. Next question for uh, Debbie Stores again, will aerospace resume flight training? Thanks, Tom. Aerospace is uh, developing a proposal for us to consider to provide limited flight training. They will prioritize the health and safety of their flight instructors and of course of their students. And so students should not return to campus in hopes of flight training until you're contacted by the flight operations management team. But yes, they are working on a plan and uh, we hope to roll that out soon. Thank you. Next question for Vice President uh, for Student Affairs and Diversity and Inclusion, Kara Hallgren. How do I get my things out of the dorms? Sure, if students are interested in getting their, their things, right now your keys and your ID access still works to get into the residence halls. We ask that you please coordinate with your RA to, um, if you're gonna check out, that you would do that and do that with them. Part of our concern is, is we wanna make sure that we know uh, where students are and that they're getting home safely. And so if you changed plans and are looking at getting your things and heading home for a while, 
we would appreciate it if you would connect with us and let us know that. Thank you. For uh, Jed, is there an emergency fund for students in need of assistance? And if so, how do they apply? So I'm not actually the expert on this. I think there are a couple of venues uh, and I believe, um, you know, through the foundation, uh, we'll probably have some possibilities of some sources of funds to help out with students in need. And there are, there are also mechanisms via the uh, student financial services area, uh, wherein it's actually a, an established mechanism so that if people need, you know, emergency loans, there's a process that they can apply on a case by case basis. And uh, so there, there are a couple of ways to make that happen. And, you know, as those things come forward, uh, you know, we'll be providing you with the pathways to do that if it's necessary. And, you know, you've, you've got your entree into the whole student finance area, you know, already. Thank you. Uh, we also have some graduate students on the line. This will go to Vice President uh, John Mihalich. Will graduate student funding be extended by a semester for those graduate students whose research is being disrupted as a result of COVID-19? I think, Tom, um, uh, I think it, the answer is it depends. Um, what we're trying to do is maintain the continuity of research. And so if you're able to continue with your research, either, either remotely or on campus, then that's what we are encouraging. If the question is, is it, is it disrupted? It would depend on the funding source, if, is my answer. If it's a sponsored fund, pro, funded project, then uh, the PI would need to work with my office and the granting agency and perhaps the program officer to, to see if there's a change of scope or budget modification or whatever had to happen if it's a funded project, externally funded project. If it's an internally funded uh, graduate stipend, then it's going to depend on the arrangements made with the person that has authority over that fund. So that might be a department chair, it might be a dean, and, and so I, maybe Tom wants to speak to that. If, if, the, if the fund is, you know, if it's a college fund, who, who would be the person to talk to to extend that graduate stipend? Thanks, John. I think that graduate students should work with their specific advisor, especially if they're mm -hmm. on a grant. And if it's some internal funding like a GTA or something like that, they can also uh, make contact with their college dean. So the deans are helping to facilitate that as well. Thanks. Uh, this one is for Vice President Holgren, uh, and it came in a little earlier, so you may have to qualify this a little bit. What if someone has come back to campus and is sick? We're encouraging students not to come back, uh, but uh, maybe you could take that one. Sure. So one of the first things that we would ask you to do is to call our good colleagues in student health services and they are available over the phone to help you identify what you might need to do specifically in light of how you're feeling. But most importantly, we want you to do that from the safety and privacy of your room and to um, self distance from other people because if you are sick, we certainly, you know, want to protect your safety as well as the safety of those people around you. So Student Health Services is available. They're waiting to take your call and they're working with students, again, to create plans for them um, that allow them to continue remotely in their education, but also about getting them better and healthy. Thank you. This will be a question for Vice President Melanie Linder. Um, I will be graduating with a master's degree in special education this spring. Will there be a postponed commencement for graduate students or will we be reimbursed for our rental of the cap, gown, and hood? When should we return our rental graduation gear? Sure. So first, it was a really sad decision that we had to make to cancel both the graduate and the undergraduate commencement for this spring. We, we wanted to make sure that our, our students have an opportunity to celebrate their achievements and we are trying to find some ways that we can do that yet this spring, though it will be virtually. 
Um, we will, at a later date, invite those who are eligible to graduate this May to walk at a later commencement, perhaps summer or winter commencement, but there'll be more information on that forthcoming. But you will have an opportunity to participate in a later commencement. As far as getting a refund for your cap and gown rental or purchase, we are having conversations now with our vendor partners, so more information will be coming on that as well. Thank you. This one will be for Vice President Holgren. What is the status on the Spring Fever concert? Will we be getting a refund for tickets? You know, again, kind of like commencement, Spring Fever concert I know is a, is a big deal and there are a lot of students that have been asking about that. My understanding is that my colleagues are working with the Alaris to try and find another time, perhaps this fall, to hold the, uh, to hold the concert. So my hope is, is that while you might not be able to enjoy it at the end of this semester, we can welcome you back in the fall with something that is pretty wonderful. So stay tuned. I anticipate that that will be finalized uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. The next one for Senior Vice Provost Debbie Stores. Will the testing center be open during this time for students? Thanks, Tom. You know, uh, our testing center was used predominantly for students who have a documented disability. And for the most part, they needed either more time to complete their tests or quiet space for those tests. And those two things can be accommodated in a remote fashion. So you should, if you have a documented disability and you need some help with the, um, some testing provisions, please contact the testing center and we will connect, we will work with you and the instructor on how to do that. There are other tests that the testing center provided through uh, relationships with other companies that required more constraints and restrictions on the, the testing environment, like when you take the GRE or the GMAT. Those companies have decided to close all in-person testing at all their sites across the nation at this point in time. So we aren't able to provide that at this moment but we're in close conversation with those companies. And as soon as we know more, we'll pass on that information. The ultimate answer is if you need help with testing, we will be there to help negotiate that with you and your faculty. Simply go to the testing website and call that number. We are working remotely, but people will answer the phone during work hours and we are here to help you. Thanks, Debbie. The next one is for Vice President Hallgren. What if my state bans us from leaving home for the next month and can't move out of the dorms before April 19th? No problem. So our residence halls continue to remain open. Certainly we wanna work with students and recognize that um, depending on the student and where you're coming from, there could be any number of circumstances that an individual is dealing with. So again, uh, while we say the fifth, we do that really in an effort to try and get a handle in terms of the numbers of students that we have living on campus, but we will certainly work with you outside of those times. And uh, the best way to make sure that you get what you need is to call the housing office directly and they will work with you. This one's for uh, Jed Shivers. Will students receive some kind of tuition reimbursement? Uh, also, will we be receiving a reimbursement for parking? Okay, so uh, I would say on the parking part, that's sort of like one of the student fee areas that I mentioned earlier, where uh, you know we're waiting for uh, some thoughts from the uh, North Dakota University System Office and the board. And again, I don't. Uh, this is not a we versus they kind of a deal. I think we're all struggling to figure out where we want to go with this. But my guess is we're going to. Uh, Pretty much, you know, I'm hoping that we'll be pretty reasonable about this and come to a reasonable solution. On the question of tuition, I think that's uh, honestly, from my perspective, it's a it's a somewhat different matter because uh, here we are continuing to provide people with the uh, educational opportunities that they are desire and are paying for, and so uh, there. Uh, my inclination would be that we would continue with tuition as normal. Great, thank you. Uh, for Debbie, 
Are there changes for students' financial aid if the scholarship requires progress in flight courses? You know, we're waiting for our aerospace colleagues to develop a flight training plan. And so we'll, I, wanna, I don't wanna respond to that question until we get that plan approved. Uh, there may be some, some responses and we'd be happy to work with each student. If you have a question, please contact the one-stop shop or, your, or the student finance office. But uh, we are waiting for the aerospace uh, folks to develop a, a, flight, a, a limited flight training plan. So I don't wanna make any promises or caution anybody yet. Uh, Kara, this is a variant of one you had earlier. In the state of Washington, we are currently in a stay-at-home order. Are there resources available to help students move out of their dorm if they are not able to return to Grand Forks? Of course. Right now, your, your items are safe in your residence hall room. Uh, again, we recognize that things, things are changing quickly and that uh, we may have to develop some plans in the near future that allows students to perhaps store their items in ways that they hadn't anticipated. As we have that information available to us, we will make sure that students are, are aware of what's going on. But in the meantime, I would ask you again to work with our housing colleagues directly to make sure that um, your specific needs can be taken care of and addressed. Thank you. Uh, back to Debbie. Uh, as a veteran, do you know if this goes through the summer, will it affect our benefits? We are in close contact with the veterans um, services and we, they're trying to be very flexible. So as soon as we know more information, if it impacts you in any negative way, we'll let you know. But at this point in time, I don't anticipate any issues to your benefits. Okay, I'm not sure who would be the best person to answer this, uh, but I'll throw it out there and see a uh, response. For students who are employed by the university but not work study, who depend on that pay for rent and food, what plan is in place to allow them to work to financially support themselves? Tom, I, I could answer initially. Is there- Let me, add, let me just add the other- part of this. Oh, okay. And this is very sweet. Thank you all for your what you're doing for students and keeping us updated. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Realize that students who work on campus, they're working because they need to help pay their bills. And we have a real committed effort here to provide remote work opportunities for you, certainly for work study students, but other student workers. It may be the case that some of the work that you've been assigned, you can't do remotely. And so we'll be working with your supervisors to identify if we can transfer your, your uh, jobs to somebody else on campus where they may be able to accommodate your needs to work. So we're working on that. Uh, I would suggest that you let your supervisor know and uh, that you're interested in continuing to work and you would like to work remotely. And if they can't accommodate you, ask them to let um, either me, Debbie Stores, or the provost, Tom DiLorenzo, know, and we'll try to coordinate an, an opportunity for you. Here's one for President Wynn with his uh, Vice President for Health Affairs hat on. For medical school, will the prospective date for the incoming medical school class still be July 6th? Will it be online? <laughs> Thanks very much, Provost. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, and I'll take the question and generalize it a little bit because it really applies to the summer semester for UND. At this point, uh, we are not sure exactly what the configuration will be for the summer semester. As you know, our plan to continue online is for just the spring semester. So we will have to make that determination as we get a little closer. But at this point, specifically for the incoming medical school class, uh, I, it is our plan at this time for it to begin uh, July 6th. For those of you who may think the medical school usually starts in August, it usually does, but we've had a revision to our curriculum. And it, it is the plan now that it will start as scheduled. The only thing that is yet to be determined 
is to the method of instruction of whether it'll be face-to-face -face or online. Uh, that determination, just like the entire summer semester, has not been made yet. But if the decision is made to go online, because we have already shifted the remainder of the curriculum to online for this semester, that will not be an insurmountable task. So plan on seeing you on July 6th, although I don't know whether I will see you directly or virtually, that's yet to be determined, but we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. <clears throat> Back to Kara, a, a bit of a variant on one from earlier. Housing has emphasized no rush. However, in the housing self-service application, it is published at the last date to move out is April 5th. In addition to this, the aviation department has hinted at the possibility of reopening flight operations. What would be the correct action to take for moving out? And if a student moves out but flight operations reopen, where can that student live? So if you move out, the residence halls will remain, uh, remain open. So we would welcome you back to the residence halls if you choose to come back. Um, in the meantime, the April 5th deadline again gives us um, some boundaries to work with, but certainly we are not set with that. So I would urge you to contact my colleagues in housing about how to work this out in a way that best works for you. We have some flexibility. Thank you. Although I think we touched on this earlier, I'm going to ask Melanie Linder to uh, answer this. What accommodations are in place for spring 2020 graduates and their ceremony, would they be permitted to participate in a different ceremony? Of course, yes. Um, well, we, as I mentioned before, it was a really sad decision we had to make to cancel the spring ceremonies. We invite and welcome those who are eligible to walk this spring to participate in one of our other upcoming ceremonies once we get through this crisis. Thank you. Uh, here's one for Debbie Stores. For people who had overseas classes for the summer, and bought plane tickets or other fees not covered by the university, will we be refunded as airlines are reluctant to refund the tickets? Could you use, here's a follow-up, could you use scholarships earned for the summer session to pay for what was subsequently taken away because the abroad classes were canceled? So we, the study abroad advisors have done a fantastic job of working with all our students studying abroad to get them home. And we've worked um, with providers in airlines to find tickets for them to get home, which was quite a challenge given what was happening across the globe. We've also said to students, our first priority is to get you home safely. Our second priority is to get your, your academic needs met, which means we have to find you some courses here on campus or through our collaborative system in the NDUS system, and we're doing that. We're in correspondence with each student now with their advisor. And then the third piece that we want to address is the financial challenges that you might have incurred as a result of having to fly back immediately. And uh, so we've said document that, and we will work with each one of you to address those fiscal challenges. So we will be in touch. Uh, very soon to figure out how do we help you through that process. But that was the order of priorities, your health and safety, your academics, and then the third is the fiscal piece. Thank you. I'll take this one. Will UND be ending the semester early? No. <laughs> we don't have any intentions to change the ending of the semester at this point. Uh, continue work throughout the semester according to what you've received in your Blackboard site. So. We anticipate ending the same time. Uh, here's one for Kara Hallgren. If a student is an international student and there is a travel ban back to their home country, how can UND support those students, especially with housing? So again, um, we, the message to students continues to be uh, the residence halls and the apartments are open. Certainly, in an effort to support social distancing and respond to COVID-19, we are looking to flatten the curve and have fewer people here in Grand Forks, if possible, have students continue to work remotely. But we know that not all students are able to do that. So again, if students need to stay in Grand Forks, we will work with you 
and uh, we welcome you here either in our residence halls or apartments. Dr. Wynn, I'm not sure you can answer this one, but how will the medical school be administering exams? Correct, I, can, I can't answer that question. Uh, I have been um, preoccupied, if you will, with the duties as interim president, and we have an update meeting on that very question later this week, but at this time, I, I can't answer that specifically. Okay, thank you. For Debbie Stores, will expanded availability of test proctoring be available during this time? We are not expanding our use of Proctor U to our remote classes, predominantly because we don't want to put any pressure on students. We don't want to make the assumption that students have the equipment necessary that uh, you need for Proctor U, so we're not expanding it past the courses that were approved for Proctor U. We're working with your faculty to provide other options for testing through Blackboard or through UJA. We're also, also encouraging your faculty to think about different kinds of assessments. The world has changed. And so faculty are figuring out how best to help you learn and how best to assess your learning. So I would ask that students be really open and flexible. Your faculty are trying to figure this out as much as you're trying to figure it out. And we all are we share the same vision. We want you to complete your semester. We want you to get a good grade. We want you to learn the material. Um, and we don't want to put undue pressure or burden on students in terms of additional technology they need. And we also want to provide faculty with the support they need. So my, uh, my plea to students is to be flexible, to communicate with their faculty. If you're not getting any immediate feedback, know that they're coping with their world too contact academic advisor. There's a team here to help you and uh, we will figure it out together. Thank you. Here's a question for uh, perhaps for Debbie. It's a follow up of the Proctor U. Some of us have kids. How do we test from home you, through Proctor U when we will have kids present? Uh, as well as not have a space set up according to the guidelines of Proctor U. Again, I think that we need to be flexible given the realities that students are also in, engaged in. They're juggling many things. And so uh, I would like you to have a conversation with your faculty member about testing. And if you have any challenges, advisors, the provost, myself, are happy to step in and help try to negotiate options for you and your faculty. So we want to work with you and we want to work with the faculty in Proctor U. So we can, we can come to some sort of understanding. We just need to know what the situation is. So let your faculty member know, number one. The faculty member, or you can reach out to your advisor as well. We have solutions. We have a Teaching Transformation and Development Academy of professionals who can help support the faculty and support students as well. Thank you very much. Here's one that I can say we don't have the answer to, but we will continue working on these. The question was for freshman students working towards North Dakota residency, will being off campus for the rest of the semester affect us? And uh, we will follow up with this question. Perhaps I can ask Melanie Linder to share a little bit about where we'll continue to post things uh, in the future. Sure, so we have our coronavirus blog, which I mentioned at the beginning of this forum. We'll be sending out UND announcements and masses like we have in the past, and we will then be posting the announcements to the coronavirus blog. On that blog are also links to other resource pages on campus, such as aerospace, IT, HR, et cetera. So if you don't see the answer to your question on the blog and it's specific to aerospace or it's an IT question, I encourage you to link to those other pages where we are able to put additional information. Thank you. Here's a question for expert physician. When will we know how this might affect the fall semester? 
Oh, what one of the critical things in the social distancing approach that is so important is to what we call flatten the curve. That is to get to try to avoid the peak of cases that is occurring right now in New York and had occurred in Italy and had occurred in China and South Korea before they were able to uh, flatten the curve, that is have new cases of coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, uh, decrease in frequency. We should know over the next couple of weeks how uh, the United States and North Dakota is doing in that regard. And that will be a very important determinant of what we will be able to do in the future. The other uh, potentially hopeful development, and again, I'm wearing my physician hat as I answer it, but the other potentially positive development that we hope will occur this summer is that we typically see a seasonal decrease in viruses like this in the summer months. Not sure exactly why that occurs, but were that to occur, that could have a positive impact on decisions uh, go going forward. Unfortunately, the, the answer to your question, as you might anticipate, is time will tell, and we will just have to continue to monitor things. We obviously are aware of the timing issues, and we will try to give you a firm understanding of what we plan to do for both summer and fall semester just as soon as we possibly can. Thank you very much. Next one for Kara Hallgren, is the food pantry available to students who are in need? It certainly is. And um, we are grateful for everyone who continues to provide gifts that help the food pantry stay uh, in business. Melanie alluded to the, um, the COVID-19 blog that the university has got. There's some great information about uh, services and programs that are available for students. Information about the food pantry is available in one of those emails. Uh, you can call the number for the food pantry and we have colleagues that will meet you there again to make sure that you can get whatever you need. Thank you very much. I'll take this one. Will field hours in the teaching and learning department be waived for this semester and not have to be made up the following semester? This is really a technical question that you're going to have to talk with the dean uh, or the associate deans in the College of Education and Human Development. They are very sensitive to the uh, field hours and we wanna make sure that students can graduate and, uh, and go on for licensure and the rest. So they will be the experts in helping you through the field hours. Anything else from your end, Debbie? No. Okay, here's one uh, that anyone could answer. Probably uh, Debbie might be the one. Should I bother registering for in-person classes for the next fall 2020 semester, or should I just do it online? I don't want to register for an in-person class and then have to end up online. So registration starts, I think, April 6th for continuing students. And you should register for the courses that you need in consultation with your academic advisor. Again, I can't predict the future, but we're hopeful that we will be able to be back on campus. We teach both on ground, in person, and we teach online, and both are quality experiences. I hope that both will be available in the fall. So come April 6th, when you um, have access to registration, you should select the courses based on what will help you graduate and what you need. But talk to your academic advisor. <clears throat> Here's one for Jed. Um, why is parking services still enforcing lots? Yeah, so uh, my current understanding, and I'm, uh, you, can, you can email me if you're having, and I'm talking to students here, you can email me if you're having a different experience. My current understanding is that parking enforcement has been significantly relaxed. And what they're really concentrating is enforcing areas that are ADA compliant, service vehicle type parking places, 
and maybe just a few others. So uh, generally speaking, other than that, uh, parking enforcement should be relaxed. So if you have a specific experience where you're, are you, from your perspective, you're parking in a place, you know, that's not in one of those areas and, uh, and you've got a ticket or whatever, uh, email me and I'll pass it on to the right people and then I'll keep track and make sure that we, uh, you know, run it to ground. Thank you very much. I'll take uh, this one. When is UND Aerospace expected to come out with a limited flight plan? We are working directly with Aerospace right now and our hope is that we'll have an answer to this question at some point later in the week. This one's for John Mihalich, the Vice President for Research. Can graduate students having department building keys come into the labs to work if they are having trouble connecting remotely? What if it is a task for which a student has to be physically present in the lab? I am still maintaining social distancing, way to go, and not gathering in groups. But what if there is a work-related emergency for which one has to be present in the lab? Thank you so much. So thanks, Tom. I, my, my response is if this is a research lab and you're working with your faculty member, then you should work out the times you need to come in and what happens if you need to come in. Um, so that's your first point of contact. If it's a computer lab or another lab where there's general use, then I'm gonna toss the question back to Tom or maybe Chief Plummer. But again, if you're a graduate student, the, the best place to start is your, your faculty advisor and or your department chair to work that out. I'll have the Chief uh, Eric Plummer talk about this. Please. So I would say only if it's approved through the department and the college working with the provost office and you're a follow, following established protocols. Now, if access is needed for research, um, then this can be arranged by contacting the operations center at 701-777-2591. Um, if there is, if students are in uh, some of these labs by themselves, I would really encourage you to utilize the Safe Campus phone app. Uh, it does contain a work alone and study alone feature uh, to assist in providing any kind of safety support in the event of an emergency. Thanks, Chief. Uh, for Debbie Stores, is this closure going to affect accreditation with different disciplines such as nursing or social work? And here's a follow up. Um, would there be extra flexibility for those who are on, who are on internships? Right. So there's different kinds of accreditation. The whole university is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, HLC, and we've been working very closely with them. They're dealing with a number of institutions that they oversee and they accredit, and they have been providing significant flexibility in the face of this very unusual situation. The deans of every college are, are working with their own accrediting bodies to ensure that the choices that they make to accommodate students uh, are approved by their accrediting bodies. So I don't, I think we're gonna be fine because we're communicating with our accrediting bodies, we're getting feedback and we're documenting and that's the most important thing. So I have no concerns. I see Josh has his thumb up to add to that. So let me just give you a national perspective in one discipline, but I think it's true of everything that uh, that uh, senior associate provost or, uh, stores just said. Uh, I sit on the national board that accredits medical schools across the United States and Canada called the LCME, the Liaison Committee on Medical Education. And we have been in touch with all of the 156 medical schools in the United States to indicate just that, that as long as they let the LCME know about the accommodations that are being instituted, uh, we are going to show great flexibility in allowing that to go forward because of the uh, complexity of this situation. So we, we now, UND, we are doing that through all of our programs, including the HLC, to make sure that we make them aware that's the critical component. But now speaking both from the UND and the national perspective, 
I, I think the answer to the question is a pretty unequivocal, we do not anticipate any problems from an accreditation standpoint. Thank you. For Kara Hallgren, I have a two part, uh, or two questions that are linked. Are international students allowed to move back into the dorms? And the second one is, uh, when is the deadline for items to be removed from the dorms? Well, certainly international students or any student for that matter can move back into the residence halls. Um, in terms of a deadline date, we have not established one for students to move their items out of the residence halls. Again, I would suggest that if students are having difficulties, uh, that they should contact the housing office and we can, we can work something out. For Bill Chaves, the athletic director, have you seen the banner article written by Brad Schlossman and has there been any debate on raising a banner to recognize the work made by this year's hockey team? Hockey team had a great year for sure. And uh, I did see the article, Brad Schlossman actually just won an award today. So congratulations to Brad. Um, you know, we've got, to, we've got to provide closure for a lot of our uh, sports teams and uh, mm -hmm. hockey being one of them. So we haven't made that decision at this point in time. Great suggestion though, for sure. And uh, we'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, I think Debbie, you might be the one to answer this. How is UND advocating for graduate students who got pulled from their field work that is required for their graduation in May? That may be from education. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of field work. It could be in the sciences. It could be in education. It could be in nursing. So I'm not quite sure what discipline, but because of COVID-19 and non-UND, outside of the UND institutions making some decisions about not accepting students at, on their locations, our deans are working really hard with their faculty to identify what's the pathway to complete the requirements. And so we're all still figuring this out. Uh, we're asking the deans to work on that and communicate to their students. So I ask for your patience as we work with the, the deans to find some options for folks, but they're all very actively engaged in that. So that's my answer for that question. Thanks. We have a few more questions. Uh, this one for Kara Hallgren. For incoming medical students, and if the start date is July 6th and the travel ban is lifted, when will students be able to apply or move into student housing? You know, I saw that one and I think it'll depend on what kind of student housing that the person is interested in, whether it's an apartment or a residence hall. I need to check into that one a little bit more and uh, we'll, we'll make sure that that information is available online for students or if the student wants to call the housing office directly, I would encourage them to do that. Thank you. Here's one for uh, Chief Eric Plummer. A couple of qu uh, questions here. Will you be allowing students to quarantine within the residence halls? What is the current plan for students that need to quarantine, not just if they have COVID-19, but also for those who have traveled domestically and need to quarantine somewhere regardless for 14 days? So based on our pandemic plan, we do have locations on campus identified for uh, self-quarantine as well as self-isolation. Uh, we also have procedures in place for feeding those that are located in these self-quarantine or self-isolation locations. We would encourage those students to work with student health to make sure they are meeting their medical needs. Thank you. Uh, here's a couple of uh, uh, teaching and learning questions, uh, Deb. I'll try and answer some and you can as well. What tutoring is available for classes such as math and will it cost anything? We offer tutoring now at no cost uh, and they used to be you know, in person. So our tutoring services will have to occur virtually and uh, I'll be working with our tutoring services to provide that. Tutoring is offered in courses that are particularly challenging math and the sciences, and I'll work with our learning specialists. So please look at the web, the tutoring website. We'll be posting information about that. Here's two that kind of fit together, if you could take a stab at these. Why are we continuing lab classes when we are losing out on using on the use of the labs 
And the second one is what is being done to ensure the quality of the remote delivery of instruction? So I'll, so let me answer the lab question first. Labs are really important because they supplement what's happening in the lecture. Of course, moving virtually, we have to be creative and the faculty and, and the chairs and the deans are working on creative options. Everything from, for example, um, a faculty member showing an actual lab experiment while students are watching it, which is different than how we normally did it, but at least it's at the actual display of the lab, ex the lab phenomenon. So that's an example of how faculty are being creative and trying to accommodate that. Others are considering having students do mini labs in their own spaces using uh, lab supplies that they can uh, buy or be sent to them. So we're, again, being creative about that. And the second question was, remind me, Tom? Oh, what are we doing about the, the quality of instruction? Again, as I noted earlier, uh, many of our faculty have online and remote experience in teaching. Some of them do not. And so they are getting uh, a lot of support from our teaching academy on how to do things effectively. And again, I ask for your patience as they're learning as well how to accommodate to this very different environment. But we're coaching, we're supporting, we're answering questions that they have. And um, so that's, that's how we're trying to help support our faculty. We also are encouraging faculty to communicate to students if things are delayed or if they're modifying things, and they will be modifying things in this new environment through Blackboard. If you get on Blackboard and you don't have any information from your faculty, reach out to them via email. You can always check with your advisor. If you're not getting communication, well, that the faculty are also challenged with their own situations. They have children as well. They're coping with the new environment as well. So I just ask for your patience, but we are trying to provide faculty as much support as they need. But I do want to say we have a number of faculty that have lots of experience teaching in this in this fashion, and they're also supporting their colleagues. So I'm going, there's several questions about courses coming up here in the future, which I'll take a stab at, but I'm, and I'm going to ask President Wynn to close us out here in a second, but I would like to turn to Melanie Linder uh, and ask her to tell us a little bit about where students can ask questions, a little bit about following the blog, those kinds of things. Sure, so to follow the blog, you'll see on our UND.edu website, we have the emergency orange banner that often is displayed when we can maybe have a school closing due to bad weather. We have a link to the coronavirus blog there now. Go to the blog site and in the footer, there's an, it's an area where you can submit questions that may come to you now after this form or things that we didn't get to today. It's und.informationrequest at und.edu. At that blog site, you can also then sign up for alerts. So anytime there's a change or an update made to the blog, you will automatically be alerted. Thanks. So all this, this uh, last series of questions were principally about courses in the future, in the summer. Will they be online? Will they be on ground? When will we know more about that? And uh, Deb, do you want to take a shot at that? Well, I, I just got an email from one of my colleagues in tutoring because she heard the question and she wanted the students to know that we are offering tutoring via Zoom. So it'll be one-on-one -on -one tutoring via Zoom. So if you have tutoring needs, please reach out. Great. What was the other question? Sorry, Tom. About summer courses, when are we going to post? Uh, will they be online or on ground? or? We haven't made that final decision, but the deans are working on reviewing what's planned for summer, what's needed for students in order to complete their uh, degrees if they're planning to graduate. So we're being very thoughtful about the summer offerings. In light of the unknown, we are encouraging to, them to consider how we might prepare to teach remotely and online if we have to. We have a little bit of time before summer registration happens on April 6th, so uh, be on the lookout for what we offer. This was an excellent session. I think the students raised fantastic questions. I hope that we were able to answer them to the degree we have the information right now. 
We want to continue answering your questions and provide answers. And, and I want to make it clear that we're all in this together. We're going to make it through. We're going to get seniors graduated. Uh, this is going to be a one UND effort, and uh, we're continuing to uh, maintain a quality education for our students. President Wynn, would you please close us out? Well, thank you all very much for participating in this. Uh, we are committed to a superb education for all of our students, but to do so in a safe and appropriate manner. Thank you to all of you students for working with us. Uh, we appreciate your confidence and we will live up to it. Together we can get through this. Thank you for your support and thank you together, one UND, we will make it through this.